Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Tuesdays with Terry. My name's Terry, and uh, I'm your friend. I'm glad to have you back listening in. What a great uh, day it is in Texas. I'm talking to you live from Austin, Texas, where the sun is hot, and yesterday it was hot. I'm telling you, it was hot yesterday. The barbecue is sweet, and all the drinks are free. When are you going to come and hang out with me? I'm glad to have you listening in. I did an interview yesterday, and it was interesting, uh, with my friend in uh, California, Nigel. If you're listening into this, I'm going to use a quote that you used for me, but I... I thought I'd talk a lot a little bit about this this morning is the quote was don't try to boil the ocean and you know you look at that and you go what what exactly does that mean well let me ask you a question have you ever known anybody that was trying to stop smoking and at the same time they tried to get on a diet and at the same time they were losing weight and at the same time they were getting a divorce and at the same time they were trying to move their residence and they were looking for a new job and all of a sudden all these things start piling up and piling up and piling up and you begin to get a little overwhelmed right you begin to get a little overwhelmed When you're trying to do too much and you can't seem to fit it all in, or you have that feeling, that sense inside your head, your body uh, of anxiousness, of nervousness, of maybe just being overwhelmed, take a minute and ask yourself, are you trying to boil the ocean? Now, can you imagine anybody coming to you with an idea saying, hey, I'm really going to try to uh, boil that ocean. That's a pretty good idea. I'd I'd sure like to see somebody do that. I'd like to see somebody try that. But what that really means is you're trying, simply trying to do way too much. We've all heard this before, right? Less is more. When I go slow, I go faster. Take your time. We've heard this as well. Measure twice, cut once. And so I want to just share with you that I made a personal career, a 35-year career out of, 35 plus years, uh, out of really focusing on, you know, few things, but I was able to do those very, very well. And so I tried to focus in my business and in my job and in my career, I really tried to focus on, for me, it was sales and marketing. If I could generate a new member in the fitness business, if I could generate a new lead, if I could generate uh, someone that had some interest, if I could give them an exceptional visit or a tour or a workout, in the old days we used to work them out. Interesting, if you're in the fitness sales business, you know, today, you know, they set the appointment and 25 or 30% of them show up and then you tour them around, you give them that tour, the Disney tour, you know, or the, you know, the airline tour, the exits are to the back and to the fronts and the sides. And, the, you know, if in case of emergency, you know, that's what we call the, the Disney tour point and shoot. Uh, but in the old days, what we used to do is we used to actually work them out. And I was an exercise physiologist. Um, and Ellen, if you're listening, I'm not a practicing exercise physiologist today, but uh, just a, a funny story, inside joke between myself and Ellen Latham, uh, the founder of uh, Orange Theory. But in any case, as an exercise physiologist, we used to work people out. And people would say, hey, I have an interest in the business. And so they would come in and we would walk them around and show them around and we'd take them through a circuit or we'd take them through a, a 30, 40 minute, 45 minute workout. And it give them give them the experience of what it was gonna be like to get an exercise program started. And the hardest part of anything is just getting started, right? Only reason I'm saying that is, you know, you can't boil the ocean. My career was made out of getting people involved in the business, getting them excited, and I would focus on the sales. I wasn't the greatest person at organization. I wasn't the greatest person at administration. I wasn't the greatest person at, you know, com- my computer skills. You know, they've gotten better over time, but I wasn't the greatest computer and technology guy. But I was pretty good at making a friend and I was pretty good at signing people up and I was pretty good at getting them involved in a healthy lifestyle and getting them on the path in their journey to looking better and feeling better. You know, sales in many businesses solves many sins. It overcomes many sins. If, you know, you're trying to cut costs and you're trying to get, uh, you know, cut personnel and you're trying to, you know, uh, focus on more profit, you know, a lot of times people focus on the things that they can control, which are the cost, and it's harder to generate top line revenue, but many times that's what solves the problem. 
And so if you're looking at in your business, if you're saying, man, there's all of these things we have to do, you know, we're trying to cut costs, we're trying to generate sales, we've got marketing, we're not getting responses out of marketing, whatever the pieces and parts are, all I would say is maybe take a look, make that laundry list, and then begin to prioritize and say, what's the 20% of the things that are really gonna give me the 80% of the results? We've heard that before, the 80-20 rule. Focus on 20%, the big rocks, right? Don't get involved in the minutia. Don't get involved in all those little things. What's really important now? And what can I do today that will give me long-term business success? What will give me long-term uh, personal success? So take a look at that for your own life. If you're trying to stop smoking, try to stop smoking and just keep that your focus for the next eight to 12 weeks. We're gonna have time to get to the next piece. If you're trying to lose weight, focus on that. And I say this to my team all the time, focus and finish. Focus on one singular piece of life, on one singular piece of your business and finish and take that all the way across the finish line. Many times we get caught up with a lot of different things. I do here in my office, people come and they, oh, they got questions about this and they got questions about this and pretty soon my day is gone and it's disappeared on me. And I, what the hell just happened to the day? As opposed to shutting my door, putting a little sign out there that says, do not disturb. <laughs> and uh, letting me focus on really what's important to get done today. You can't boil the ocean. Don't try to focus on too many things. Remember, less is more. Identify what the priority is, what's really important today. How can that help today and how can that help for your long-term success, personally or professionally? Then make the decision, set aside some time and really focus on that one piece. My name's Terry, I'm your friend. I hope that was helpful.